The first building block we'll talk about is the expression block. Expression blocks are used within text blocks to provide the value of a computed expression. This can be a variable, a calculation like 2 plus 2, or a method call as long as it has a return type. Expression blocks use the same angle bracket hash syntax as directives do, but use an equal sign to denote that it's an expression block. Expression blocks do not require the use of a semicolon when using C sharp. In fact, you'll get a build error if you try. Expressions can be spread over multiple lines, but you should avoid this. In fact, if you're writing your control logic in Visual Basic, you'll receive a build error if the expression isn't on a single line. To demonstrate the use of expression blocks, we'll build out a template that tells us what day of the week Christmas is on. We'll start with our text block, then we'll add our expression block that uses a date time to parse the date of Christmas and then returns the value of the day of the week property. We'll execute the template by saving it. Looking at our results, we see that Christmas of 2010 was on a Saturday. When expression blocks aren't enough, we have statement blocks. Statement blocks contain one or more lines of code that get evaluated when the template is executed. Statement blocks can only contain expressions such as variable declarations and instantiation, method calls, looping, and so forth. Basically, if the code would be allowed inside of a normal method, then it would be allowed in a statement block. Methods, classes, or other structures cannot be declared inside of statement blocks and will throw an error if attempted. The syntax again uses the angle bracket hash pair, but the lack of an additional symbol denotes that it's a statement block. Statement blocks can be combined with text blocks and expression blocks to produce dynamic output. Going back to our Christmas template, we'll add a statement block, then define a temporary variable called Xmas. Then we'll loop over it 10 times, adding a year to the date on each iteration. After the statement block, we'll use another expression block to output the day of the week using the Xmas variable. As expected, our output contains the day of Christmas in 2010, and now for 2020 as well. The final building block is the class feature block. Class feature blocks contain code that can be called from statement and expression blocks, usually helper methods or complex logic that needs to be reused in multiple places. Class feature blocks are used to define methods, classes, fields, properties, and constants. Any code that is allowed in the scope of a class will be allowed in a class feature block. We define these blocks using the angle bracket hash pair and using a plus sign to denote that it's a class feature block. Class feature blocks should come last in any template file. Only other class feature blocks can occur after a class feature block. Statement, text, and expression blocks are not valid if they occur after, and you'll get a compilation error if you try. Just like statement blocks, class feature blocks can also contain text and expression blocks. To improve our Christmas template, we'll add a class feature block at the bottom of the template, and we'll add a method called getDayOfXmas and have it take in a year parameter. The method will build a date, then return the day of the week from it. We can easily reuse this method multiple times within our template. Now even though we've defined the method scope as private, the scope isn't going to have an effect on usage in design time templates. Now we'll replace the expression blocks with calls to the new method. And then we'll delete our previous statement block. And the output is the same as before, but our template is easier to read and the logic is centralized in a reusable method.